And then most recently, it just came out on X that the 49ers have been awarded five compensatory selections and I'm in the upcoming draft, which I believe gives them 12 for the draft. I'd have to double check it, but I think it's 12. I think, guys, I want to start right there with the compensatory selections. I actually think that John Lynch, Parag Marate, Kyle Shanahan, and the 49ers are actually doing something that is a little bit ahead of the rest of the league. I'm not saying they're Joey Light years like uh, you know Joe Lake up in the Warriors, but I think this is the Warrior. The Niners are ahead of the league, and you say, well, why do you say that? I think they have ma- they have mastered the free agent formula, which is the Niners have, let's say, 21 free agents. They're probably going to let like eight, 17 or 18 walk. They're going to take, you know, their four, three, four or five compensatory selections, whatever it is. I and mean, some of them are due to coaches leaving minority coaches leaving. So that also impacts the whole thing. But they're going to take whatever number of compensatory picks the league allots them. And they're going to let their free agents walk. And then the last two years, they've gone into the free agent market and signed a star. Last year, Hargrave, two years ago, it was Mooney. Three years ago, they traded for D Ford, or maybe a few years ago, they traded for D Ford. Yeah, that was a minute uh, ago. It, was, it wasn't. He's still on the ago. payroll, though. Yeah, yeah he is. He's He'll still here. He's still here. next decade. But I kind of think they're ahead of the game here. And, and I think it's because John Lynch gets it. John Lynch is a former player and he understands that if you sign eight free agents, you got guys looking over the room going, well, wait a second. Why are you paying that guy to come in here when me and this guy are better and we're already here and you asked us to work, you know, extra hours last year to cover vacation. And we had to, you know, we had to work harder and now you're bringing in these guys and you're paying them more. So John Lynch, I think deep down understands the dynamics of the locker room. But you know what? You don't get those complaints when you sign Mooney because Mooney's better than the competition. Right. And you probably don't get too many of those complaints signing Hargrave, even though he wasn't great, just because on paper he is better than the rest of the room. Uh, I think they're doing it the right way, and it also kind of makes it juicy because now today we can speculate if they continue what they've done, what monster free agent will they be on on Monday or Tuesday of next week? Yeah. Give me your guys' thoughts on on the way they're they're handling free agency. Am I wrong to give them credit for this? Does it to me this seems like a a very well thought out uh, winning approach to free agency? How do you guys see it, Jake? Let me let me let me start on this one because I I think that whether they're intentionally doing it or not, and we should probably give them credit. They're pretty intentional about what they do on a day-to-day basis, but whether they're intentional about it or not, building a team through free agency is no way to live. Like you, you you can't effectively do that. Look at the Dolphins. Yeah. So spreading out that money, right? If you have a big chunk of money and the Niners have had big chunks of money year in and year out because of the way that they handle their top end players, their lack of a middle class, clearly pointing to the intention. Like you don't want to bring in a bunch of guys making six, seven million. Because there's a reason they hit the free agent market. Most teams would re-sign good middle-class players if they had the chance. And uh, and going out and getting a top-end guy, it doesn't work out all the time. We saw that with Hargrave at least after week 10, or at least after he had his injuries with the hamstrings. But um, it is a clear way of saying, okay, we're going to prioritize a weakness And then everywhere else, we're going to draft and we're going to develop. And by the way, that keeps the roster relatively cheap. You can get off on some of these big contracts that, in a way that you probably couldn't if you had a bunch of little ones. Um, It's anti-Patriots, but you know what? I think this is the way the modern league works, especially with the salary cap going up and up and up. I I think if it is intentional, it is it is smart. And 11, 12 picks, I don't think they'll take all of them. I think they'll package some of them together, be able to move up and, and get a guy that they really want, even if it's just moving up a few picks. But having that kind of ammunition, especially knowing the cap hell that's coming for them in a couple of years when Brock Purdy needs to get paid, yeah, I think this is an effective roster-building strategy. I don't think they're going to end up in the wilderness when it's all said and done and they actually have to pay the piper for all these contracts they're handing out. What do you think, Jake? You're all over this. Yeah, you look at, um, you know, like the guys they got picks for, they got picks for Jimmy Ward. Mm -hmm. Um, Aziz, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is the interesting one, right? He was supposed to be a third rounder and he came out as a fourth rounder. 
Um, the fact that they even got that for Jimmy and just letting him walk when they wanted him gone for as long as they did is pretty incredible. But yeah, they don't they don't pay for those guys. Like they could have tried to keep Mike McGlinchey or Aziz or Jimmy Ward and all those guys and middle class guys. Uh, when you have a guy who's not bona fide clear elite, I think they tend to let those guys walk. But what they also do is they find guys like Arden Key uh, and Cleland Farrell, like guys like that, uh, and Charles Amenahu, um, like those types of guys. They always find one guy where you know there's analytics that tell them you know there are signs to buy into these guys um and i think they're just really really good at identifying those guys and then instead of paying them 10 million a year to to be like a decent edge rusher uh if their price tag goes up they let them walk on top of that jake i mean i think it's a great point like they know their systems and that's a big reason why steve wilkes is out and nick Sorensen, who had never interviewed for a dc job is in they want to get back to what it is they know because they can build personnel based on what it is they do and what is the foundation of their squad. So when they're going out and looking for a defensive end, sure, they can go and pay somebody $20 million opposite Nick Bosa and have a $50 million bookend at defensive end. Or they can understand, hey, some guys are better built for this one gap wide nine system than others. And they can go out and they can attack those guys and buy on the cheap because they know what it is they run and how it is they run it and find guys who might not be as effective in the open market, but will be highly effective for them. They know their offense inside and out. They know what it is they're about. And uh, by the way, I mean, I wish they would draft more like that. I wish that they would draft more for sort of the positions that it, they so clearly have defined in their minds because they've had a lot of misses. At the same time, they've had a lot of hits, especially in the late rounds. We look at Purdy, we look at Kittle, we look at Warner. Um, when they hit, it hits big. When they fail, it fails big. That's that's how it's a boomer bust operation, but they got a lot of boom players on this team. And I, again, I think it's a great point, Larry. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they added another one because you look at that defense, which is where they've wanted to throw their money over the years, and there are holes. There are clear cut holes. You add in the injuries to Greenlaw and Armstead. You look at safety and some question marks there besides uh, Brown. You look at opposite corner. I mean, there are some spots that you can throw some money at, and maybe it would make a lot more sense if you're playing Madden, if you're doing you know, some sort of fancy football, to spread it all around. But that's just not how the 49ers operate, and clearly what they've been doing to this point hasn't won them a Super Bowl, but it's working pretty damn well. 98% of the teams in the league would trade places with them in a second. Do you guys expect them to go big on a on a big name guy in free agency? I mean, Chris Jones is out there, Christian yeah. Wilkins is out there. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm reading, I'm I'm watching NFL on ESPN right now. Aziz Al Shayir is is out there, and he, heck, he was at there, he was at the Green Bay game, yeah. um, and makes me feel like maybe he wants to be here still. Do, do you do you anticipate them going after? a big name like last year they went after Hargrave and they went after him early, like really early, like day one of free agency. I think they may have signed Hargrave. Do you guys expect to see the same on Monday it's, or Tuesday? It's, and it's and who do you think it will be? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a clear position it makes sense. Like honestly, the best person to bring back would probably be Chase Young, you know, in terms of you can physicality and pass rushing and upside. Granted, you know, his consistency was not there. So, you know, it's it's something where I I think that they're going to try and bring in like a linebacker. I think Aziz might make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but again, his price tag might be a little high. So it's a weird market. Uh, I think Hargrave was a clear need. Uh, I don't know if there's someone that's that makes as much sense. Jonah Jackson, the guard, is a is a real From possibility. Detroit. Yeah, he he was he was a big loss for Detroit in the playoffs when he got injured. I mean, he's a really really good player. Um, you know, Bryce Huff perhaps at defensive end. But again, I think Jake's spot on. Like, there isn't a clear cut super elite player. That's I mean, I guess Chris Jones, but I don't think anyone expects Chris Jones to leave Kansas City. And I think that that's even out of the 49ers' price range with the way that they want to roll over salary cap space, the way that they want to handle things moving forward. I mean, they'll have to restructure a lot of dudes anyway. I don't know if they can restructure enough dudes to get Chris Jones onto the roster. And by the way, when you're hitting free agency, I mean, you probably only get one good free agent contract in your career, unless you're a hall of famer, you're looking for that term. You're looking for a contract that can go as long as, 
as long as someone will give it to you. And that's not really where the 49ers are. They are in a two-year window unquestionably, perhaps longer. We'll find out. But financially, they're in a two-year window to maximize. And they already got a million void years on the books and this and that. Jake and I are not of the mindset that the salary cap is real, but the 49ers are pushing up against the limits of reality here. They might find out that the salary cap's real in due time. And I don't think it will be a Saints situation because they've managed this a whole lot better and they do have a lot of exit routes that they can take when they do have to, when push does come to shove. But um, if you're signing a Chris Jones, you're doing it for like six years with probably a bad year tacked on at the end, maybe two. Right. I don't think the Niners can afford that more so than the actual money that they'd have to pay Chris Jones in the short term. And again, I just don't see him leaving Kansas City. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw one one name out there that I'm not saying it, it makes financial sense, but yeah. if you wanted to be ruthless about it, you could cut Dre Greenlaw and go after Devin White. Like, yeah. I'm saying if you really want to maximize your window and like that's a position you're unsure about, you want to just swing for the fences, that's a name. He's 26. Like, I'm not saying they're going to do that. I highly, highly doubt that they would do that. Yeah. Uh, they love Greenlaw. If he comes back 80% of himself halfway through the year, I think they'll be happy with that. But if you're talking about a position that could actually make sense, swing for the fences in a free agency, you know, a person who's on the right side of 30, uh, Devin White, why not? Yeah, great player. I love me some Devin White. I've been a huge fan, but he did have his career low in tackles last year. You know, he'd been hovering over like 110, 120. I think he had 83 last year. But, man, this guy gives you – he's kind of like a delayed pass rusher. I mean, not only is he an inside backer, but he's he shoots gaps. He puts heat on the quarterback. 